Well, I started off by telling you that we're talking about the, uh, when I read some articles, we had the guy last week, actually, that kind of sparked all this about the, getting a job, and he does um, IT. We had Craig Fixture on, and he was really very good. And what I learned from him is that he, they, he talked about how, how to use LinkedIn to get jobs, and I thought it was great. Uh, he gave some great tips, and if you really should watch that segment again, it's on our blog spot. Uh, CelebrityUradio.tv, and I would I would uh, check out his his uh, his his segment. It's a long segment, but that's because there was a lot to it. But one of the things that came up is that people there's articles everywhere that saying the people in their fifties are really getting the crunch on this job thing, and they're going years, they're going through their savings and and their four hundred one ks, and and so it's just really hard to get a job out there for them. They feel. And and especially and and they go to interviews. So today I have in the show is Julie Bartlett. She's an image consultant, and she's also a personal shopper. She's been business for about 19 years, and she's worked in. Um, she works with people in 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 helping them look their very best. I'm going to read a little bit about her here because she because she really does have a lot of background. Well, she she started in the home decor business, so she's got that flair eye for 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 design, which I don't have. So she started shopping for her clients and found, you know, I can't think of anything more fun than going shopping for people. I mean, I love to shop, and so she turned it into her passion turned into a business. <laughs> she was so good in it. So she worked as a freelance makeup artist on the Chanel Blitz team in New York. In the tri-state area. Yes, and so hey, this is Julie Bartlett. She's she's going to fill in for me here. And she now serves people in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And she's uh, she's following her passion, which I believe you can do. It is, a go- you know, it is her goal to exceed the expectations of everyone who is counting on her. And her moderate motto is, be radical, always look fabulous. After all, when imagination fires the soul and possibilities vanish. I also like your tagline, which I'm going to end the show with probably then, but uh, she has on her email, I love this, a woman with good shoes is never ugly. (laughs) And that's a a quote from Coco Chanel, so, you know, that's after my own heart. No wonder we talked about shoes. So I want to welcome to the show Julie Bartley. Thank you. And Julie, I want to thank you for coming today. And and I've met you at the I've seen you at so many events, Mm -hmm. and we we had a good discussion on this particular subject. Why don't you, I know that you did an article about this, but why don't you just tell, I gave a few things about you, but tell me about your expertise in helping people that, that you've been working with that are looking for em, employment and just generally. I, I work with a lot of people who are in various types of transitions in life, um, but you are wanting to talk specifically about those who are in transition looking for a job, sometimes in a whole new career field, um, and they're dealing with the frustration of having been let go. Uh, So they've entered that job search market involuntarily. And sometimes they've entered it, though, voluntarily, but because there are so many people out there uh, searching and hunting and fishing, uh, there's a lot of competition. And so they want to be up on their game, and they want to present themselves in the best way possible. Because when you do that, when, you, when your visual package lines up with your verbal package, you can actually speak less and accomplish more. Because it's easier for people to hear what you're saying. You know, you... Yeah, because they, they'll look at you that way. <laughs> well, and, and we, we make judgments. It's not a matter of this society, you know, we've created this society where we do that. It's historical that we look for reasons for... Um, a, uh, they look for that spark. Well, they they look for ways to connect with you, and they also look for ways to stay away from you. Uh, You have to have certain boundaries in life. And uh, so one of the things that we do when we dress well is it helps us to more easily attract the people and the opportunities that we want in our lives. So in transitions, when they're looking for a job, they've got to know that how they're presenting themselves in that arena is the best that they can do. So that they're more confident, they're not distracted by thinking that they've done something wrong or could have done something better or could have done something different, you know, all that 
talk in the back of our heads. They don't take themselves out of the game by what they're saying to themselves. Okay. In fact, they're more easily to engage in the game, in the conversation of the interview, when they know they look great. Yeah, because it is a stressful thing because mm -hmm. you are, I mean, you're making a first impression. Yeah. And that all eyes are on you. Yes. And they notice that small detail that mm -hmm. just could make that difference. And emotionally, it's a, it's a stressful experience. So when your emotions are more calm, because you, you know, you, know look, you know you look great. Yeah, and it's it's actually more fun because you can hear what the other person is saying easier when you're not taking yourself out, when you're not hurting yourself by saying negative things or just absorbing you know, um, self being self obsessive in your thinking. You can hear each other easier. Yes, and that's what you want to do because mm -hmm. you're you know if I, if you connect with the interviewer, it what I was reading uh, and as I was reading all this, I guess I should bring it all with me, but it was saying a lot of it. I mean, your experience is important, but if you just go in there and just say just the facts, ma'am, mm -hmm. you know you're right. you're not going to stand out, and it's that it's that them seeing something about you and engaging them in a way of you know that person was nice so. right yeah no sale is made simply on the data points yeah there has to be an an emotional connection with either the product or the person in in an interview situation it's definitely with the person so you want to easily emotionally um, engage with that person that you're talking to well, one of the things I wanted to ask is when you go on an interview and you always want to have your resume extra copy and thing mm -hmm. like that with you, and I know we're going to be talking even more about clothes and some other things, but but what do you, of course, you, what do you want to bring with you as an accessory so you don't sit there and look like the bag, at least for me, like the bag lady, or, you know, you're carrying in luggage, I'm here to stay. Right. You know, because we talked about that I like big purses, but some kind of uh, what is the best thing to do, a small brief, and for, especially for a woman or a man, um, what kind of briefcase, if, if they should bring a briefcase even. Well, your industry dictates whether or not you bring in uh, any kind of a briefcase or uh, a portfolio. Um, uh, as far as a man goes, one of the best things he can do is empty his pockets of change. So he doesn't jingle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he doesn't nervously put his hands in his pocket and play with the change because uh, that's very distracting. But also then they're not adding bulk to their midsection. And so they look slimmer and taller. And there are a variety of tools that we can use to help us look competent and successful. And height is one of them. But also by not creating a lot of bulk on our person, it's easier for people to really see us. We're not hiding behind a garment that's too big. And we're also not overexposing by wearing garments that are too small or ill-fitting. Well, let me ask you, and that brings up that article that she has it at her uh, website mm -hmm. uh, and Blogspot. It, it's a uh, she reviews an article by a Jody Helmer, but it was with Money Watch, and they were they were talking about you know paying to look good may increase your overall pay, right? And offers several ways to invest in your look, you know. Mm -hmm. But but that attractive men and women are often seen as more talented, mm -hmm. kind intelligent and that can lead to promotions and raises mm -hmm. and getting the job of course and there's only positive results from making yourself attractive every day because you know for most of us we want to work with people that we like looking at mm -hmm. so when we've made the effort to look attractive and approachable it really shows not only self-respect but that we respect and honor the people that we are going to be spending the day with that we invested some time and energy and focus into ourselves so that we could more easily engage and attract the person that we're going to be with. Well, I don't know. This is I used to do this is I would ask the interviewer. Uh, I would ask them, um, what is your culture? But making sure that I didn't show up on a, on a day that it was, you know, I, what do y'all... Or y'all suit some people, and actually they were very nice about it. I said I only want I want to be able to you know I don't want to come in with the with the with the spotlight totally. I mean, and they were always about that, but of course they're always going to downplay it some. But if you interviewed on a Friday, and it's gotten more, my understanding is a lot more formal. We talked about that than mm -hmm. it was years ago, where you literally could be walking in and talking to someone, and I guess they figure we can wear shorts. 
you better not be able to, but I don't know that that's really an issue anymore as much as it used to be. Yeah, the it's it's so industry specific now, but there is a trend over the past three years to going back to a more formal attire in business, in part because it does affect our productivity, and uh, yes. and it affects our morale, it affects our focus. And when we want those things to increase, then you have to increase how you look and present yourself because it affects how you feel about yourself, your confidence level, which in turn uh, affects your productivity level. Like I said, you know.